Hello Creative Gems, welcome to Creativity. Today I'm excited to show you six different one-of-a-kind home decor pieces you can make yourself using silver plastic spoons from the Dollar Tree. These spoons come in a 24 pack and I usually find them in the party supply section. I love crafting with these spoons because they are so versatile as an embellishment and I'll show you that shortly. We are going to be making wall decor, a mirrored game board, mirrored vanity trays and more. With that said, let's go ahead with our first home decor craft piece. First we will need a wired basket. The one I have is a basic wired hanging basket from the Dollar Tree. This one came in white but I decided to paint it a metallic silver. To decorate the basket, I will be using the arms of some plastic silver spoons. I'll be using some leftover flat oval crystal gems that I bought from eBay several year years ago as well. I start by opening one package of the silver plastic spoons. Then I proceed to break the round part of the spoon from the arm part. The number of spoons you will need for this project is dependent on how large your basket is and what design you prefer for your basket. If you have extras, you can always put it aside for a future project. Then I take my basket and remove the hanging handle from both ends. If your basket does not come with a handle, then you can skip this step. The next step is to test out a design for the basket. For mine, I decided to put two rows of spoon arms down the length of the basket. The second row would be placed in the reverse position to make the arms fit nicely. Once I am happy with my design, I'm going to use my glue gun to start gluing down the arms. I apply a dollop of glue on both ends of the spoon arms and then place it directly onto the wired part of the basket, ensuring it adheres tightly together. I repeat the gluing process until the entire basket is covered. As we finish off the basket, we're going to affix some additional crystal gems to it, just to amp up the glam factor. You can choose to add different types of gems, and you can also opt for as little or as many gems as you prefer. And here's a close-up on the basket, fully adorned with the spoons and gems. And here's a full view of the basket. Leave me a comment and let me know what you would use this basket for. And if you made it to this point of the video, drop me a note with the word spoons so I know you visit it today. And now let's head over to our second home decor piece. With the leftover round part of the silver spoons from our first project, we're going to use those to make a mirrored serving tray that can actually double as wall decor. To start, we're going to embellish the spoons with some small clear round acrylic gems. Make sure you apply the gems to the part of the spoon that curves outwards. And while we work on embellishing the spoons, I would like to take a moment to thank you for tuning in today's craft project. If you enjoy glam home decor and DIY crafts on a budget, it would help me greatly if you would subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any of my glam home decor DIYs. And if you like what you see today, please give me a thumbs up as well. Your support will really help me continue providing you with more amazing and creative craft tutorials. And the best part is, subscribing and giving me a thumbs up is absolutely free, but will make a world of difference to me. And here are what the spoons should look like adorned with the crystal gems. I call them crystal clusters and now we're going to place them onto a dollar store wired wreath form. But before we do that, we're going to take the wreath form and apply some fix all as well as some hot glue to it so we can adhere it securely onto a silver charger plate. The fix all will provide long lasting hold, but the hot glue will give us an immediate hold so we don't have to wait to continue our craft project. And then next, we're going to take a framed round dollar store mirror and adhere it to the center of the charger plate as well. And we're going to use some fix all and some hot glue. I found this mirror at the Dollar Tree and it originally came in black, but I decided to paint the frame in metallic silver. Once the mirror is affixed to the charger plate, I would recommend to double check to make sure that both the mirror and the wreath form are securely adhered to the charger plate. You don't want any of the pieces to move and if there is any movement, add some more glue where you need to. Now finally, we're going to decorate the wreath form with the crystal cluster spoons that we made earlier. Simply add some dollops of glue to the bottom of the spoon and secure each onto the wreath form wire. You'll want to do this until the entire wreath form is covered with the crystal cluster spoons. Thank you. 
And here's what our mirror tray looks like so far, but we're not done yet. If you have been following my channel, you'll know that I like glam, lots of glam and bling. So with that said, we're going to take some clear round gem stickers and place them all around the silver frame. And here's the final look for our mirrored tray. Look at how beautiful the crystal clusters look. The gems sitting on the silver spoons absolutely sparkle, especially in the light. And as I mentioned earlier, this tray can also double as wall decor, since you can also hang it onto the wall. Comment down below and let me know whether you would hang this or whether you would prefer to use this as a serving tray. Also, pop a note into the comment section with the word spoons so I know you visit it today. And now on to our third home decor piece. We will need two chrome napkin holders from the dollar store. The first step is to attach the two napkin holders together back to back by applying some Fix-All and hot glue. To keep them from moving around, we will also be using the cable ties that I found at the dollar store to tie them together on either side of the napkin holders. And then for added security, you can also use some clamps to clamp the two napkin holders together while the glue dries. In the meantime, I have taken a couple of packs of dollar store silver plastic spoons and I've already snapped the round parts of the spoon from the arm part. The round parts of the spoon have been kept aside for a future project and we're only going to use the arm part of this craft project. Taking the arm parts of the spoon, we will embellish each of them with some clear gem stickers. Here are what the spoons should look like. And now the fun part begins. Here we will begin to adhere the embellished spoon arms vertically onto the napkin holders to cover the opening where the napkins would normally go. For one of the napkin holders, place the spoon arms all in the same vertical direction leaving a small gap between the skinny end of the spoon arms. That way you can place the additional spoons on the second napkin holder in the opposite vertical direction. The small gaps will also allow the light to shine through when we place the string lights inside. And in case you were wondering, this is going to become a wall sconce, which will require no electricity since we will be placing a battery operated pair of string lights inside the napkin holder.
And here's what our wall sconce looks like so far, adorned with the beautifully decorated silver spoons. And just a little tip, if you want a larger wall sconce, all you need to do is attach and embellish three or four napkin holders together instead of just two. The final step is to unwind some string lights and carefully weave them inside behind the spoon arms, inside the napkin holders. Final step, you can glue the little battery unit directly onto the bottom of one of the napkin holders be behind the spoon arms. And although the hot glue should be strong enough to hold the battery unit, double check to make sure that everything is secure. And there you have it, our wall sconce decorated with silver plastic spoons is complete. Look how brightly the light shines through the crystal gems, making the wall sconce sparkle so beautifully. This will light up any room or corridor. Comment down below with the word spoons and let me know what you think. And now let's begin making our fourth home decor piece. First, we will need an empty Ferrero Rocher chocolate box. These boxes are typically acrylic and open up into two parts. We will be using both parts for this project. To remove the Ferrero label, we will need some packing tape. Place a couple of strips of the packing tape onto the Ferrero Rocher label and using the warmth of your fingers, rub down on it for a few seconds. The heat from your fingers will help lift the sticker off the Ferrero Rocher lid as you peel back the pieces of tape. And once the labels are all completely removed, we can begin making our first tray. We will start by taking one of the lids and covering the inside surface with a healthy layer of Mod Podge. For this, we're going to use a sponge brush to brush on the Mod Podge. This is so we can prepare it for some silver or gold glitter. And now that we have enough Mod Podge on the surface, the next step is to sprinkle some silver or gold glitter, whichever you prefer or have on hand. While we let this dry, we'll put it aside so we can start working on the spoons. Here we have a bunch of spoon arms that have already been broken off from the round part of the spoons. We'll take each spoon arm and adhere a row of clear round gem stickers to it. And the number of spoons you will need to embellish will depend on the size of your Ferrero Rocher box. For mine, I'll need a total of 10, two on each of the shorter sides and three on each of the longer sides. And this is what the spoons should look like. And now we're going to take the first lid that we worked on and plan out where to place the spoon arms. We'll have two spoon arms positioned horizontally on each of the shorter sides, and then three on the other two sides. But because the spoon arms are not long enough to cover the entire side, we'll add a couple of clear gems between them as part of the design. To adhere the spoons and gems to the sides of the lid, we'll be using a little bit of hot glue, just enough to ensure the spoon arms and gems adhere properly.
Once one side is done, we're going to follow the same steps for the other sides until they are all done. Now on to the second Ferrero Rocher lid. For this lid, we're going to cover the entire surface with some glitter fabric craft paper. I found this at the Dollarama, but you could also opt for regular silver glitter paper. I have some leftovers from a previous craft project, so I'll proceed to cut my pieces to, to size. You can actually leave the middle empty though, as we're going to be covering it. To adhere the pieces, we're going to use clear tacky glue so that we have some time to make adjustments to the positioning of the paper. I find that hot glue is great, but it dries very fast and sometimes it's too clumpy. And we want to make sure this paper lies absolutely flat on the lid. The next step is to take a mirror and adhere it to the middle of the lid. The mirror I'm using is 4 by 4 inches, so I'll be placing two of these inside the lid, but you could use whatever size you have that would fit into the lid. Now we're going to embellish the rest of the inside of this lid with some more silver glitter craft paper and some silver beaded necklace. Side of this lid, we'll be covering the sides with a strip of silver rhinestone ribbon. And to keep with a cohesive design for this lid, we'll also add a string of silver beaded necklace. Now let's turn this upside down. To give the tray some height, we will adhere four silver napkin ring holders, one on each corner. And by the way, these napkin ring holders came in a six pack from Dollar Tree.
And there you have it, our fourth home decor piece is finished. The top lid is embellished with our silver plastic spoons and matches the silver rhinestone theme of the bottom tray. You could actually use this either as a single keepsake box or separate the lids into two separate trays as well. And as a bonus, I have come up with a third tray design using a spare Ferrero Rocher lid from a previous project along with some additional silver plastic spoons. To begin, we're going to take a sheet of craft paper from the dollar store, one that has a pretty design. Cut the craft paper to size so that it will fit into the Ferrero Rocher lid. Then take some rhinestone gem stickers or whatever embellishment you have on hand and stick it on to the sides of the lid on the inside. Then take some spoon arms and adhere them to the sides of the lid on the outside, just like we did earlier for one of our other trays. And this is what our tray looks like so far, but we're not done yet. We're going to add some legs to the bottom to give it some height. Turn it over and you, and if you prefer, you could use four crystal doorknobs as legs, but I'm going to opt for the same silver napkin holders as we used on one of the trays earlier, just so that we can keep the costs as low as possible. And here is what our spoon embellished tray looks like. I have an idea of placing some of my favorite jewelry on it, but I'm also thinking I can turn this into a tear tray with our spoon embellished tray from earlier. I'll simply place some glass candle holders I found at the Dollar Tree and then place the other tray on top. Take a look, isn't that just gorgeous? And how unique is that? Comment down below, let me know what you think, and also drop me a note with the word spoons so I know you made it this far in today's tutorial. And with that said, let's continue with our fifth home decor piece. For this project, we're going to make a tic-tac-toe game board. We will need a framed mirror. The size of the mirror can be 8x10 or 11x14 or anything in between. The frame can be any color, but to amp up the glam factor, I would recommend a gold, silver, white, or black frame. We will also need some silver plastic spoons. We will need exactly nine spoons. Now, to start by building out the game board with the mirror, we are going to use a black and silver crystal diamond wrap. For my frame, I will measure out three rows for each of the four sides of the frame. Once the mirror frame is decorated to your liking, put it aside for the glue to dry. In the meantime, we will start making the X's and O's for our game board. For this, we will be taking 9 silver plastic spoons and snapping the round part from the arm part of the spoon. We will keep 5 round sections of the spoon aside and take 4 arms and, using a sharp scissor, cut each of the 4 arms in half. For this part of the project, you may want to put on some safety goggles on to prevent any stray pieces of the plastic spoon from flying into your face. Once the spoon arms are cut in half, glue the two pieces from one arm to make the shape of an X. For this part, I would recommend using hot glue. Once four X's are made, glue on an acrylic gem to the center of each X.
And here is what our X's look like. Once the four X's are completed, glue on an acrylic gem to the center of each round part of the spoon until all five are done. It's what our O's should look like. The next step is optional, but I would like some height for my game board, so I will be building some legs to place in each of the four corners at the back of the mirror. For this, we will take four clear plastic lids that I saved from empty bottles and embellish each with some silver diamond wrap. You will need to measure out the diamond wrap to fit properly and then use some glue to affix the diamond wrap to the plastic lids. If you don't have any of these plastic lids, you can also opt to use silver napkin rings from the Dollar Tree or some crystal doorknobs from Amazon. And this is what my game board legs look like. Once all four legs are completed, use some hot glue to attach one to each of the four corners at the back of the mirror. Now let's turn the game board over. Next is to measure and cut strings of the silver beaded necklace to create the grid lines to the tic-tac-toe game board. I did not film this section so as to avoid reflection from the mirror due to the camera overhead, but this is what the tic-tac-toe game board should look like. The final step was to place the X's and O's on the mirrored game board. And that completes our glam tic-tac-toe game board. This project was so much fun and I hope yours turn out as glam as mine. Not only will this be a beautiful showpiece in your living room, but it will also offer hours of fun and entertainment. And now on to our sixth and final home decor piece. Besides two packs of silver plastic spoons, we will also need one large re round wreath form and a silver charger plate. To start, we will place the wreath form flat on the table and then place the charger plate upside down onto the wreath form. Use a combination of E6000 or Fixol as well as hot glue to adhere the charger plate to the wreath form. The E6000 or Fixol will provide permanent hold while the hot glue will provide instant hold. Make sure you apply the glue to where the charger plate and wreath form touch. I find that with the dollar store products, the items are not always perfectly shaped so you may need to test it out before you apply the glue. To allow the E6000 glue or fix all glue to adhere fully, I would also recommend placing something on top of the plate and waiting for 12 hours before handling the plate and wreath form again. Next, we're going to use the same glue to adhere a round mirror to the plate and wreath form. The frame of this round mirror was originally black, but I painted it metallic silver to match the wreath form and charger plate. Also, the frame mirror was found at the Dollar Tree. Next, take the two packs of plastic spoons and use your hands to break off the round part of the spoon from the arm part. We will only be using the arm part of the spoon for this project so you can set the round part of the spoons aside for a future project. The number of spoons that will be required will depend on how you space them out around the mirror. Dollar Tree sells their spoons 24 per pack. For my mirror, I used about two packs of spoons. Next, we take the gem stickers and adhere a line of them down the middle of each spoon arm. Once you have enough, start gluing the spoon arms down onto the charger plate and wreath form with some hot glue. Make sure you space the spoon arms out evenly, about one centimeter apart from each other.
and as you may have guessed by now, we're making a sunburst crystal mirror and this is what it looks like so far. But we're not done yet. Once the spoon arms are adhered, then we repeat the same process by placing the plastic picks that I chosen and put it in between the spoon arms. These plastic picks are also available from the Dollar Tree. To add a final piece of glam to our sunburst mirror, we will adhere a string of silver beaded necklace around the border where the frame and mirror meet. For this, I would recommend using some hot glue and white glue. The hot glue will help quickly set the first bead into place while you glue down the rest of the beads with the white glue. The white glue will take a bit longer to set but will dry invisible. And I'm also going to apply some gem stickers along the frame as well. And here's the final look for our sunburst crystal mirror made of silver plastic spoons. I think this looks so high-end, yet it only cost us a few dollars to make. Comment down below with the word spoons and let me know which home decor piece you like the best from today. And if you enjoyed today's craft tutorials, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And in the meantime, stick around and check out my other beautiful DIY home decor pieces.